Hi, I'm Forrest Tanaka, and welcome to part two of your own photography website without coding. So I hope you enjoyed part one, hope it was understandable. So if you followed part one, you should be at a point where you have your own web hosting service, uh, totally empty of files, but at least you've got your domain name and your web host ready to go to fill up with your website. So if we look at the overview of the tutorial, we'll see that the next step is setting up WordPress on your hosting provider. This part two is going to be completely on that subject because it's really, um, in some ways, the most important part. So let's get started. Um, so for this, uh, for that bullet, what we're going to talk about first is make sure that you can get to your new web host control panel. That's so uh, you don't have to go to this control panel very much, but you definitely, definitely need it to uh, start your WordPress website. Then we're going to download WordPress from WordPress.org. That's the actual WordPress software, the WordPress engine that your site will be based on. Then we'll upload WordPress to your web host. And uh, that's where you're going to start needing the file manager that I talked about earlier. Then we're going to create your MySQL database. WordPress needs this database created before it can start working. Then we're going to edit one file on in your WordPress installation. For some of you, this may be the hardest part. It's definitely the most error prone part, but it's not that hard to do. There's not that much to do with that file. And the last thing is we're going to install WordPress and get it running. By the end of this part, part two, you're going to have a working WordPress website. Not really one of your own, it'll have a default theme, but uh, it'll be a real working website all ready to customize for part three. So let's get started. Well, we're at my website right now where I'm gonna show you the control panel that I have for my web host, AN Hosting. And uh, so here's my URL, or domain name actually, forest-tanaka.com. So to get to my control panel, I just add to that C panel. And then I get to my login screen. There's a redirect there, which is pretty typical for most hosts. <clears throat> okay, so there's my login screen. So I just need to enter my login credentials. So I'll just skip over that part. And there's my control panel. Now I've noticed most hosting services, uh, it looks pretty much like this. You may get a different set of icons here, but you'll find uh, some shortcuts here, information about your website, and then uh, all these icons. And the ones that we are most interested in are these, MySQL, databases, and PHP MyAdmin. Uh, what else we're interested in is the file manager right here. So like I said, uh, I'm going to assume that your web hosting has a file manager. So there we go. That's our control panel and hopefully you have something that looks a lot like this. So the next step is to download WordPress. And to do that, we need to go to wordpress.org. Okay, and this is looks of course different from wordpress.com because this is more of a developer's site than a user's site. And so, so to download WordPress, we need to go to this red download tab or this blue download button. And then choose which kind that you want to download. And um, choose zip, the zip version, which is the default because uh, most people's control panels or file managers in their, in their control panels use zip compression. So it's a good thing to get that. Okay, so here is the wordpress.zip file, and make sure it is in a zip file. Um, if your browser automatically unzips zip files, you may have to re-zip it again. But uh, so, in the end, make sure you've got this wordpress.zip file. This is a 4.7 megabyte file, and this is the entire WordPress engine that you need to get onto your website. So let's go back to the, your hosting control panel and look for the file manager. And like I said, I'm going to assume that you have this. There are other ways to do it, but I don't want to get into that because there are just too many variations. This is by far the easiest. So if you open that or click on that, uh, you'll often get this kind of dialogue, just say okay. 
and you'll get a new window showing all the files on your uh, hosting. So now actually the top level has these directories and you'll find differences in every hosting provider. Um, but this is fairly typical. This is a top level directory that you can't really do that much with. But there's a directory called public HTML. There's also one called www, which happens to be the exact same directory, just uh, alias to it. <clears throat> so all your uh, website files should go in here. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to put it in yet another subdirectory under there, uh, which I have here, and then in a directory I'll call clean photo. So <clears throat> as you can see, this is, pretend this is your website. You can see there's nothing in it. Sometimes you'll find some things, maybe a CGI folder, and you can just ignore those. If they're there, just leave them there. If you want to remove them, it's probably okay as well. Now we want to put the zip file that we just downloaded for WordPress in here. So let's go look for an upload button, and there it is. And you'll get different kinds of uh, windows coming up for this. For this one, it lets you choose a file. Let's do that, and we can leave the rest default. It's in our downloads folder. And now it's uploading. So let's wait for that to upload. All right, now it's done uploading, and we can close this. Now, a lot of times there's a refresh command. Uh, let's see, where is it? On here, reload. And so we can see on our website is the wordpress.zip file. Um, the web server can't do anything with that. We have to unpack it. So select it. Uh, sometimes you have to be careful not to click on the name because then you go into this rename mode. So click on the icon until it's selected. <clears throat> and then you'll need to extract. So let's do that. It says extract it to where? So into clean photo. In your case it would be whatever your main directory is. So let's do that and wait for it to extract and it's already done. These are all the files that come out of it. So we'll close that. Again we'll reload. Now there's a little bit of a problem. Um, well there's this Mac OS 10 directory. We don't really need that. It doesn't hurt anything either but that just kind of confuses the issue. So here's our zip file. We don't need that anymore, so we can delete it. But here's WordPress inside of this WordPress directory, which is, again, not where we need it. So we'll have to move all the files from inside of here into this directory, into this uh, higher level directory. So let's double click on it. Here's all of WordPress. And there's usually a select all. So we'll select all and then move. So we're going to move it into the parent directory. So move files. And it gives you all, you know, do you want to move all of these? Yes, we do. And into where? Well, here we see that the bottom uh, directory is WordPress. That's the one we want to move it out of into the upper directory. So we'll just delete WordPress. So now that means move all these files from out of the WordPress directory into this clean photo directory or your top level directory. So we'll move files and you'll see the WordPress directory is now empty. We can go up one level and again this is a pretty typical file manager interface. I've seen it on a lot of uh, web hosting. Here's our empty WordPress directory. You may want to double click, make sure it's empty. And again, up one level, and so we can delete it. Or you can leave it there, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so this is WordPress. Now, before WordPress can be installed, or can install itself, it needs a MySQL uh, database. So let's make one of those next. So to make your MySQL database, go back to your control panel. And you may see some differences, but the vast majority of the time, you'll need to go to an icon called MySQL Databases. You'll see under Databases, there's these three, 
or four, sorry. Um, and there's a couple that you need, but to create them, normally you use this MySQL databases. So we'll click on that. Okay. And so what we want, need to do is create a new database. I'll call it clean photo. You'll probably want to call it by whatever name you want to name your website, or you can name it just anything, but just make sure you keep track of it, of the name. So let's create the database. And it's created. Now notice the name. There's this, and there's also a prefix that's unique to me. Uh, this is pretty common. Um, it's probably true in the vast majority of cases that all your MySQL databases will have this prefix, some sort of prefix, and you'll need to keep track of it. Now, so as not to forget the name of the MySQL database, let's copy it, and I'll just bring up the uh, text edit here, just some way to remember it. So I'll say MySQL, MySQL database name is that, because we'll need it in a, just a bit, actually. So now let's go back. Now we have a database, we need a user. So usually at the bottom, we can add a new user. We'll call it um, clean. It needs a password. So just give it something. What you can do is just make one here, unless you have a password manager. Just something ridiculous. I uh, may want to get rid of the semicolon in there. Password, password. And then we can create user. Okay, so again, let's copy this. MySQL user is that. And my SQL password is that. These are just notes for us to keep track of. Now we have a database and we have a user. We need to attach the user to the database. So go back again. And what we need to do is add user to database. So are we taking clean, clean photo? So user name clean database, clean photo. So we'll now just click add. Now it's going to ask for uh, privileges. You want all of them. For WordPress, you always want all of them. So we'll click here. So clean was added to database clean photo. We'll go back. Now to verify, let's look for clean, oops, now there it is, clean photo, looks like an empty database with user clean. We don't want to delete it. So now we have an empty database, we have a user, we have a password, it's all set for WordPress to use. So now let's go back to the file manager and you need to look for a file called wp-config-sample. And there it is. And what you, you have to do two things. One is to rename it. And all you do is you get rid of the sample and the dash before it. So it's just wp-config. So you do that like I just showed you by clicking on the name, selecting which part to delete, and just delete it in the normal way. Hit return. And that renames it. Now you need to edit it. And this is where you need one of my other extra requirements I mentioned in part one which is to have an editor. And so if you select this file and you click edit, it brings up this editor. Okay. And it's not a very big file, but you do have to change it. You look for a line that says define DB name. This is the name of your database. So let's go back to our notes, the database name, is that. So you just double click on the database name here and paste it. Make sure the single quotes are still around it. Now you need your username there. Copy it. Paste it on the DB user line. And then you need your password. 
copy it, paste it here, our new password line. The rest of it you don't have to change, but there is one entry I do like to change, and that is the table prefix. Now, WordPress makes tables within your database that you created, and it always gives them this prefix. Now, I feel like it would help if uh, hackers didn't know what that prefix was, I'm not sure that's really true, whether it really helps. But I usually like to change it, uh, just to some gibberish word. Uh, T-Y-N-U-L, maybe. Okay, so now all the tables WordPress uses will have this prefix before them. And that's all that I change in these files. So now click Save Changes. success so now you can close this and so now WordPress is all ready to be installed so let's do that next the last step is to install WordPress now we have all the files there we have uh, the database made so all we have to do is for uh, WordPress itself to install itself and connect itself to the database so go to your domain name. In this case, it's a subdomain of mine. That one, clean photo, and just go to it. And what you'll see happen is it'll go to this install URL. So this is the WordPress introduction. So what you need is a site title, like the name of you, your name in other words, um, so I'll just say BM Arbus. Uh, username, I like to make it a full name. System Administrator. And some passwords. And you'll need to make them very tough. There are some horror stories about uh, people who just temporarily put in this uh, easy password and their site got hacked within minutes. So you'll need something. Uh, pretty good so let's try that okay and then your email I'll do my public one here and uh, you'll want this this checkbox checked allow my site to appear in search engines like Google um, in this case I'm going to uncheck it just because this is a demonstration site so we'll install WordPress and just sit back and let it do its thing and there it is done. WordPress is installed with that username and the password. Uh, the password, which I've forgotten now. Um, hold on, did I save it? Oh yes, I did save it. Okay, so now it has this login button. Go ahead and click it. And it brings you to this login screen. We won't worry about that right now, we'll worry about that next time. But let's go and look at our site. So it says back to DN Arbus, meaning back to the main site. See, your domain name would be up here. And there it is. Wow, this is your website on your own web host. So of course, it doesn't have any of your content. It may not have the look that you want but it's a first step it's a real website it even has a couple menus going to sample pages see so that's really cool you have your own website now you can brag to your friends about it so that is it for part two and so for part three we'll look over administering your uh, uh, new website uh, because that's going to be an important part of your site maintenance so thanks a lot for joining me, and I will see you next time.